Going on to topic 5 of module 4, we're going to look at solving radical equations. And you might say, well, what are these? Well, these are equations that have a radical sign in there somewhere. So the key is, how do we solve them? Well, the first thing we want to do is to isolate the radical. So we're going to take the negative 5, transpose it to the other side, becomes a, I'm sorry, negative 4, transpose it to the other side, it becomes a positive 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. Okay, we've isolated the radical sign. We now want to get rid of the radical sign. Now the rule for doing that, anytime you have a radical sign, is what is the index number here? And the answer is 2. Well, if we raise this side to the second power now, our index numbers are the same. This then just becomes the radicant, and we've gotten rid of our radical sign. Well, but if we squared that side, we have to square this one. And there's our answer. So if we put the square root of 81, which is 9, 9 minus 4 is 5. This checks. Now here again, we want to isolate the radical. Now when we transpose the positive 10, it becomes a negative 10 plus 8 is going to be a negative 2. Now, can we have the square root of something equal a negative? And the answer is no. So for something like this, there is no solution. Now, in letter C, they start to get a little more complicated. So, once again, we need a strategy that we're going to isolate the radical. So we're going to transpose the negative 2, and on this side it becomes a positive 2. Now again, to get rid of the radical sign, we have to raise it to the index number. So we're going to square that, and if we do it to that side, we must do it to this side. So we're going to expand this binomial. x squared plus 4x plus two, uh, 4. Now on this side, raising an index number to that power, you just get the radicand. Now, notice you have a quadratic equation. The only method we have so far in our toolkit to solve quadratic equations is to put them in standard form and factor them. So let's do that. x squared, subtract an x, subtract an 8, and we get that. Now we factor this. x, x, 4, 1, plus 4, minus 1. So, we can use the shortened method now. x equals a 1, x equals a negative 4. Now, we had mentioned earlier there are times when we solve these equations where one of the answers we get do not make a true statement. Now if we put the 1 there, this is 1, we put the 1 there, 
uh, 1 plus 8 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3 and then minus 2. This is a 1. So this one checks. Now if we put a negative 4 there, we get a negative 4 plus 4 well a negative 4 plus 8 gives me a plus 4 that gives me 2 minus 2 that's a 0 negative 4 does not equal 0 so this answer even though it was generated through the process is called an extraneous root and we don't include this. Now in MATLAB they're going to give you perhaps the set 1 comma negative 4 if it's multiple choice. But if you select that they're going to count it wrong. The only answer you can put in is this one. Now on a test if you've done all of this work and you put these in and they're going to count it wrong, I'm able to override that and give you lots of partial credit. The only thing you didn't do was to check your work. Now remember, you do want to check things as best you can. Now there's a couple of ways to do this one and I will show you the way it's obvious here and perhaps the other way as well. So if we write this as 3x plus 2 to the one-third power and I'm going to transpose this positive 4 to the other side where it becomes a negative 4. Now I can put this in brackets here I want to get rid of the exponent one-third. Well if I cube this side here it's going to end up as a one but then I have to cube this side as well. So this becomes 3x plus 2 these cancel out because I'm multiplying and this becomes a negative uh, 64. I'm now going to subtract 2 from both sides and get a negative 66. Divide both sides by 3 I get x equals a negative 22. Alright, that's one way to do this. The other way would be to convert this into its radical form which would have been the third root of 3x plus 2 equals a negative 4. Now notice to get rid of the radical sign here we'd have to just raise this to the third power and this to the third power and then we get this step. So you can see you could do it this way or you could do it this way. Let's go on. Now examples of this type are just a little tedious. You have a radical there, a radical there. So to get rid of the radical sign where you've isolated one of them already, you're just going to square this side. And you square this side. So this just becomes the radicant. And we'll put it over here so we have a little more room. 4x plus 1. Now, the rule for squaring a binomial is to square this. So this just becomes the radicant here. Multiply these two together and double it. 
So this becomes plus 4, the square root of 3x minus 5. And we square the 2, which gives us a plus 4. Now, again, take it step by step. Where we've squared this, it just becomes that. Multiply these two together, double it, becomes that. And we square this. So now we group like terms. 4x plus 1. Now we have a... 3x there. We have a negative 5 and a positive 4 will leave me with a negative 1 plus 4 the square root of this 3x minus 5. Now we have to isolate this radical again. So we're going to transpose this to this side. This just becomes an x. Transpose the 1 to this side. This becomes a 2 over there. So we've gotten rid of this and this and we now have 4 the square root of 3x minus 5. So once again, we want to get rid of the radical sign. And we do so by squaring both sides. So this is going to be x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now we have to square this. So that's 16. And then this just becomes the radicand. So we're going to clear parentheses now. Uh, this is 48x. And then a negative 5 times 16 is a negative 80. And we have then on this side still x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now we have a quadratic equation. So we have to bring everything over to this side. So we have x squared. This is going to be a negative 48x, so a negative 44x. And this is a positive 84 equals 0. Now we're looking for something in which we have a sum of 44. Well actually this factors pretty easily. You know the x goes there and the x goes there. If we divide this by 2 we get 2 times 42. And if we add these up, we get 44. And they're both going to be negative. So we have here then x equals 2. Or x equals 42. Now interestingly, both of these make these equations true. So there's the protocol step by step. Now if you have one like this on your exit exam, you would need to show some similar work that you got these answers. So again, a strategy might be write this on a separate sheet of paper and you try it without referring to this to see if in fact you get these answers. And if you don't get it the first time, you watch the video again, look at it step by step, then the uh, next day or so, the evening, try it again, write it out, and then see if you can get the answers. This way you know you have mastery of it. 
and of course you'll be doing practice and quiz me's. Now here they have it in function notation so let's use all the room we have. We have this. Now the rule is you want to isolate one of these so I'm going to take this term bring it over to the other side as a positive square root of x minus 7 and then my plus 1 is there. So once again the rule is you want to square this side and square this side. So this just becomes the radicand and when we square this it just becomes the radicand. When we multiply these two together and double it it becomes 2 the square root of x minus 7 and squaring a 1 becomes a plus 1. Now we want to group like terms so I'm going to take this x here and this x and they just actually cancel out. So I subtract an x from both sides. These just cancel out. Now I have a negative 7 and a positive 1. This gives me a negative 6 here. Let me write that too. So a negative 7, positive 1. Save a little room. This becomes a negative 6. Now we're going to take this term to the other side where it'll become a positive 16, a positive 6 plus 10, and then I get 2, the square root of x minus 7. Now again, if you deal with smaller numbers, things work out better. So what I'm going to do is divide both sides by 2. So I then get 8 equals the square root of x minus 7. So it started off looking pretty daunting, but then again, step by step, this is what I end up with. So again, I have isolated a radical sign. I want to square this side. I want to square this side. So I get 64 equals x minus 7. Once I do this, I then take my negative 7, transpose it, that gives me a positive 71. x equals 71. And if you put a 71 where x is, it makes this a true statement. And there's only the one answer. Okay, we can wrap this up. And we're almost finished with Module 4. One more lesson.